Uh, since we're talking about Red Sox shortstops, uh, I wanted to bring up one of my crackpot theories and see if we could get it shot down by the panel here. No, it should be easy. I hear a lot of talk about how the Red Sox have the prospects to get anyone they want. They have enough prospects so they can add any they player. They can raise they... Babe Ruth from the grave. Exactly. They can get anything they want. So in my book, I've always heard that the Marlins would, under the right circumstance, be willing to trade Hanley Ramirez because they've traded every good player they've had there. They do have him locked up long term for fairly short money. Um, why not put together a package that has four year names that you hear all the time? You know, whether I guess Bard has kind of become untouchable now because apparently he throws 117 miles an hour. And well, he's your he's your if we're getting way ahead of ourselves. Who is? Um, why are we getting ahead of ourselves? Bard, Bard? is Bard is your Papelbon after uh, he goes. Sure. After so he pa- leaves so in Bard agency. probably is, but it, you know, you don't have any shortage of starting pitching. Both now and for the future, you've got a bunch of guys that are ready to pitch. You know, so if you can give away Buckholtz, Bowden, a couple other Bs, Lars Anderson, maybe throw in Spike Owen. <laughs> I mean, why not? Wouldn't wouldn't having Hanley Ramirez have an enormous impact on this team? I mean, this this is what I'll say. And we talked, I believe it was last week, about the uh, the Roy Halladay rumors. Yes. And I'm not real big on that because I don't think it makes you significantly better enough to warrant the risk of right. giving away all of those pieces. A guy like Hanley Ramirez, much younger. And you got you got him for four years. Hits, but- hits for power. Hits for average. Speed. His defense, abysmal. Okay. You Is, can, all right. See, I, I, I did look at his numbers. They do, they're, they're poor. Do, do the Red Sox need a – do they need a great defensive shortstop? What it – I don't think they need a great defensive shortstop. I think that they can get away with a defensive shortstop like a Hanley Ramirez if you are able to kind of solve the conundrum at third base right now. Mike Lowell has not – his hip has not allowed him the same range that yes. it previously allowed him, but that's also a move that at least two years down the road, you're going to have a new third baseman here, whether it be somebody that they've gotten from the system or somebody mm-hmm. that they trade. Uh, there's obviously no reason to believe that there's a Hanley Ramirez trade in the works, but that's the kind of move I think that you need to be willing to spend those prospects on because he's the kind of guy that, while he doesn't solve your your middle of the lineup power issues, well, he definitely gives you another run producer yeah. and he gives you several different ways to score. You've got speed, you've got average, you've got power, you've got he is he's the a total package outside of his defense being what it is. If you start off your lineup with Hanley Ramirez. Pedroia second, Euclid, Ortiz Bay. Assuming you had Lowell back, all of a sudden you go from having you have no there's no outs in the lineup. Veritek's not an out anymore, and but Nick Green's an out right now. Lowry, who knows? I mean, I still I you know I would still like to see him as a utility guy. I don't want to see him playing every day. Well, I mean, crazy. he has not gotten a fair shake here yet. Through Lowry, I don't think he has. I well, mean, he's been he, injured. He got a fair shake last year. Well, he's been injured. You you have to see what you have, and that's why the Sox have been very hesitant to make any sort of yeah. moves until he gets back up here. Would would he have to be included in a in a Ramirez deal? I'm I'm not probably. I no. You, you could so? definitely make the case that if you have Hanley Ramirez, all of a sudden Lowry yeah. becomes less valuable. Ex- he could also you know. be your third baseman, depending on. That's what I'm wondering is. Mm, I don't know if he would be your first choice, but at the very least, he could be a stopgap for you while you tried sure. to make a deal. I mean, that's when the off season when they re-signed Veritek, obviously not knowing he was going to get, you know, he was going to hit half of his hits for extra base hits this year. Yes. You know, the Veritek move is the kind of stopgap thing that lets you say to other teams, "We're not in desperate mode here." We don't desperately need a catcher before we go into the season with George Kataris and his one at bat. You know, right. If yeah. You have you know, to, in the short term, if you have to take a Lowry at third base and put him in that spot, you're okay. Not, not to get off topic, but can we just speculate for a minute with uh, with Veritek? I hate speculating. Can we can we can we kind of just speculate? You know why we're seeing this year out of him? Because I I, I watch what he's doing and I'm just amazed that he can be producing this after you know the beating he took from fans after last year physical beatings Phys- uh, actually with shoes can i can i can i feel this one can i feel this one I'll, i know it, i'll give you a start i Cooch make, is our I'm baseball tag expert. out here i, I think i'm, out, I'm gonna go use ahead. give it a start i'm going to use uh terms that i feel will impress my friend the the baseball expert 
Uh, Veritek probably has a similar um, amount of balls put in play as he did last year. Is that true? I I could believe that. He's he's average is about the same. He's hitting he's about two forty. He's, he's just hitting for more power. Other other than that, he hit for he hit a lot of doubles last year. I think he had thirty doubles or so. He walks a lot. He's not markedly better offensively, but it's just it's just enough. Two forty five is like that's okay. You know, twenty two homers, twenty two doubles, that's okay for a season. It's he is hitting a lot more balls solidly. Yes, that his his actual contact percentage may not be higher or lower. That I don't know off the top of my head. But he's hitting a lot more balls solidly, and he's shown an ability to get to pitches that last year he could not get to. As a left-hander last year, he was embarrassingly awful. Yeah. And it was a lot of it was vision. You know, a lot of it is you get your timing off in the pl- at the plate, and you can't catch up with an 89 mile an hour fastball. We saw it with Ortiz, and then it gets in your head. Major League Baseball players are incredibly talented, but it takes such a level of self-confidence yeah. to do what they do. If you have a bad run, even a guy like Pedroia, you have to stop and go, and you have to start thinking about mechanics, and by the time you've realized what the pitch coming at you is, it's already too late to swing. Fair enough. It, I, it, it yeah, feeds, so. it, it, it begets itself. So it's a lot of little things that are going better for him. But I think Typically, mostly it's perception more than anything. No, I think perception is a big part of it. It's... This is a difficult place to play. Let's not forget, Jason Veritek made the all-star team last year. Didn't he? He did. He did. Did he not? He did. He um, he may have even played, which is more than we can say for Tim Wakefield. But Well, Tim Wakefield is uh, I'm not even that's sure. A, does, he that, even count as a, does he even count as a player? That's a canoe for another lake. That is a canoe for the other Tim, lake. Tim Wakefield might take offense to that statement. Well, hopefully he'll never hear this. Well, Big look, fan. 